I love ocarinas. One of my life's goals is to help more people fall in love with ocarinas, hence why I make videos talking about them and sometimes playing them too. But I've realized a major error in my ways. Most of my ocarina content is for people who already have ocarinas, and I haven't done much to persuade people to buy one in the first place. Let's fix that. Here are seven reasons why you should buy an ocarina. And before we begin, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell icon, and leave a like if you enjoy the video. It helps out immensely. Back to the video. Number one. Playing music is really good for your brain. Numerous studies have shown that playing music is equivalent of a full body workout, but for your brain. I won't dwell too much on the science because I've already made a video about it. Click the card right there, but we'll do a quick summary. Basically, playing music activates both sides of your brain as well as numerous sensory inputs. Altogether, this is a total brain workout providing lifelong benefits. Benefits including decreased risk of dementia, improved memory, as well as benefits to other cognitive functions. This applies to playing any instrument. And if you're not a musician yet, by the end of this video, you might be persuaded to buy an ocarina to get these benefits. Number two. Oh god, I, I can't, I can't, I can't with that voice. Number two. Ocarinas are generally easier to learn than most instruments. Learning an instrument is hard, there's no debate about that. However, I would argue that the ocarina has a considerably easier early learning curve compared to almost any other instrument, at least for reaching basic proficiency. While I already had four years of wind instrument experience before I started playing the ocarina, it only took me about an hour to get to basic playing of songs, and about a month to get to basic proficiency. Results will vary, but I think anyone with good resources such as the method book by my good friend David Eric Ramos and a functioning instrument such as the Knight by Noble, this one right here, affiliate link below, can start playing basic songs within an hour and reach basic proficiency within about a month of about 20 minutes of practice a day. And that is way, way faster than most instruments. However, this is complicated by number three. Ocarinas are challenging to master. The ocarina journey is much easier to get started on than most instruments, but it's just as hard as most instruments for getting to a master level. Again, I've already made a video on this topic, click the card right there if you want to watch it, but we'll summarize. Playing notes in tune confidently is just the first step, and that's basic proficiency. There are loads of advanced techniques, muscle memory, musical improvements, and other things you can do to become a master player. And within many advanced techniques that ocarinas have, they vary from instrument to instrument. There's very little standardization in how you apply these techniques. Thus, I think of these techniques more as applying philosophy rather than techniques that you can apply unanimously, ubiquitously, not unanimously. That's a different thing. For example, on one ocarina, you might find an alternate fingering that works really well, but is out of tune on another ocarina. And you might apply a technique to extend the range of your alto C that simply doesn't work on another instrument. The point is this. It's relatively easy to reach basic proficiency on the ocarina, but that doesn't mean they're an easy instrument. Ocarinas provide enough challenge for someone to dedicate their life to practicing, studying, and improving on. Look at all the professionals in Japan, Italy, South Korea, and numerous other countries, as well as American musicians like David Eric Ramos. If there were no challenge to mastering the ocarina, it wouldn't be interesting to keep playing for so many years. They may be difficult to master, but they are easy to buy. Number four. Compared to most instruments, ocarinas are extremely affordable. Part of the challenge of ocarinas is that there's no standardization and you have to apply techniques differently on different instruments. While the fingerings may be the same on an alto C and a soprano C, the prime considerations as you play for each are very different. And something that enables this challenge of non-standardization is because they're so affordable. The very best violins may cost tens of thousands of dollars, but the very best ocarinas rarely exceed 1,000. Many absolutely amazing ocarinas ocarinas sell for under $100 to $200. For even more perspective, a beginner violin costs between $500 and $1,000, typically. And a typical pro violin, not like a very top top line pro, but a typical pro violin can cost up to $10,000. A beginner ocarina, like the Knight by Noble, affiliate link in the description, costs about $30. And outrageously good pro ocarinas are almost always under $300. Ocarinas by Osawa, arguably the Stradivarius of ocarinas, the, some of the very best ones, $700. It's outrageous. As professional grade instruments go, $700 is so 
cheap. All things considered, a serious ocarinist will spend far less money on their concert instruments than most musicians would. However, what ocarinists gain through low individual price, they make up for with large collections. I don't know the exact economics of the ocarina industry, but when they're all relatively affordable, it is really easy to end up spending way more money than you intend on them. I have around 50 ocarinas in my collection now, maybe more, and no, I'm not going to think about how much it all cost. We're not going there. It's okay. And on top of that, because most single chamber ocarinas have relatively limited ranges, that being a little over an octave and a half, you might need multiple ocarinas for specific musical projects. Though this problem is countered by multi-chamber ocarinas if all you need is range. That said, some songs are ideally played on single chamber ocarinas, and many ocarinas are just pretty. They're art pieces you can collect in some cases. If ocarinas are negatively affecting your finances, check out my video on when not to buy ocarinas. Card right there. But otherwise, we'll move on to number five. Ocarinas are extremely small and portable, usually. One factor as to why ocarinas are so relatively cheap is their size. He's just a little lad. He's just a little guy. Most ocarinas are small enough to fit into a pocket or a purse. I can fit this one in my pocket and I almost always used to carry it in my backpack in my university days. Some of my ocarinas, like my big honkin' triple bass C, these are exceptions to the pocket rule, but these still very easily fit in a backpack. So compared to instruments like trumpets, that is extremely, extremely portable. Though before you put ocarinas in your backpack, it is important to consider the inherent breakability of ceramic. So if you slam your backpack around, you do risk breaking them if you go off on adventures with a bunch of ocarinas on you. But because ocarinas are so small, whether they can fit in pockets or backpacks, I always carried my Night by Noble with me in university. And I typically bring this with me on trips too. And when I go to gaming or anime conventions, I typically bring like three or four to have a wider repertoire to play songs with since they're so freaking portable and because they're so portable that brings us to number six they're great conversation starters at appropriate places because it's so easy to carry an ocarina around it's so easy to use them as conversation starters quite literally i can trace my first full-time job out of college to buying an ocarina in 2011 and the connections that i made through that to summarize how that happened i built a reputation as the ocarina guy at FanimeCon in san jose every year and one year songbird ocarinas had a booth at the convention and my now good friend david ramos was working it apparently people asked him if he knew me because of my reputation as the ocarina guy at that convention. I became friends with David, that eventually led to me joining Okabanda, which led to so many other things, like the existence of my YouTube channel in the first place, and making friends with lots of creators at various events. While purchasing the ocarina indirectly led to me getting my job, the results of people I met and conversations I had started by my ocarina led me directly to getting my first job out of college. That company wanted a creator with a network of influencers, and that was me, thanks to the ocarina. I'm on the job hunt again right now, but even recent interviews I've had, the interviewer has mentioned that they found out what ocarinas are by looking me up. Sometimes the things you least expect can completely alter the trajectory of your life. And for me, the ocarina was the conversation starter that facilitated many of those things. Number seven, ocarinas are fun. Plain and simple. Like, they're small, so you can bring them everywhere. They're relatively easy to learn, so they're really encouraging to get good at. And there's enough long-term challenge that they stay interesting. I find so much joy just leaving an ocarina on my desk and occasionally playing music. And they're a really fun little expression of my interests. Since like most people, I found out what ocarinas even were in the first place by Legend of Zelda. Circling back to the mental benefits of playing music, Fun is certainly one of them. You could learn another instrument to get that mental workout, but you could get an ocarina as well. They're generally pretty easy to learn, portable and affordable, which is not the case for most instruments. I have an affiliate link to the ocarina I recommend most for beginners, the Knight by Noble, but if you want more nuance on the notion that ocarinas are easy to learn, check out my video challenging that idea. They may be easy to learn, but mastery takes a lifetime. Leave a like, subscribe for more, watch that video, and thanks for watching. Happy tootin'.